Piranha Dredge Model PS135E. There's two pumps, two engines. This is the agitator pump. Uh, it provides a high pressure water jets uh, to slurry the sediment. Um, and this is the slurry pump that then draws the sediment and delivers it on to its destination. When you get the unit, it's fully assembled like this. The hoses are not attached, of course. Um, but it's fully assembled, um, ready to go. The first thing that you need to do is to put oil in the crankcases in both engines and uh, consult with the engine owner's manual that comes with the unit uh, to advise you on the type of oil and how much. But uh, that is the very first thing that you have to do. The crankcases are empty um, when you receive the unit and you must put oil in the engines before you do anything else. And these are, these are four-stroke engines. You're not putting oil in the gas. It's not a gas-oil mixture. You're putting oil in the crankcase just like you would in your automobile. Um, once you've done that and um, you've filled up the engines, um, uh, and again, consult the, the owner's manual as to what type of gas to use, but basically it's just unleaded gas. Get your hoses uh, uh, plugged in and ready to go. And before you start dredging, the, uh, you have to put water in, the, um, in both pumps. And this provides cooling for the mechanical seal. The mechanical seal is what seals the shaft that comes from the engine and goes inside into the pump that turns the impeller. There's a mechanical seal around that shaft, and that seal requires water for, for cooling and for lubrication. If you run this engine without putting water in the pump case first, you're going to ruin your seal. Um, and it's simply a matter of taking the plug out of the top of the pump, and both pumps have plugs. And these are these plugs that have an O-ring seal. So you don't need to use a wrench to tighten them down. In fact, over tightening them you can end up breaking the cap. It's just a hand tight deal. That O-ring seals and you don't need a wrench to, to tighten it. It's simply a matter of taking the plug out taking a bucket of lake water and pouring it in the hole. Now you really can't tell when the pump case is full because the water never come, fills up and comes out the top here. It goes out the hoses and so you can't really tell. This is a fairly small pump case and so it doesn't require a whole lot. So I just take a good bucket of water and pour it in there. Again, you can't really tell when it's full, um, but it, you can't overfill them. So just you know, pour plenty of water in there to make yourself satisfied that there's going to be water standing in the pump. The S-135 is a 3-inch discharge dredge. Um, it has a 3-inch intake and 3-inch discharge. This is the agitator. Uh, pump hose. This is the the output of the agitator pump. It's high pressure water that is providing the, the water for the water jets. That we provide is a 20 foot hose with a 16 foot wand. The wand is um, composed of two 8 foot sections uh, which thread together and we provide you with a reinforcing sleeve that bolts over the joint uh, to to provide more strength. The standard suction head that we provide with the unit has one inch diameter round holes. This is a safe head to use in that the pump itself will pass inch and a half diameter spherical solids, which is just a little bit less in diameter than a golf ball. Um, as an alternate head, we have a head that has inch and a half diameter square holes in it. Normally, uh, you're going to use this head. The one inch diameter holes 
make it very difficult for you to pick up a large hard object that can pass through these holes and yet cannot pass through the pump. When you're using this alternate head with the larger inch and a half diameter square holes, there is an element of risk that you can pick up an oblong shaped rock that can fit through the, the openings of the head yet not be able to pass through the pump and if it's a hard object like a, a chunk of wood or rock or a piece of metal um, it could jam the impeller on the pump and uh, stop the engine and you have a lot of energy there that is stopped all at once and something can fracture. So it is recommended that you use this head um, uh, if at all possible. Now there are some circumstances where this head um, may not work for you and we're in one of those situations here today. The situation we're in today is that we have a, a pond here that happens to have a lot of freshwater clams in it. And these freshwater clam shells are just the right size and shape where they suck up against these round holes in, the, in our uh, standard suction strainer and they cling there and they very quickly uh, clog up all of the holes in the strainer rendering it ineffective. So we're going to use this head today. Most of these clamshells are going to pass on through. These clamshells can't, uh, cannot harm the pump and it's going to be very difficult for these shells to collect and starve our intake like they do with this head. The floats that we provide you are intended to take, uh, to take the payload out of the hose so that the operator with the wand in his hand is not having to work very hard. There's two small floats that, um, that you use um, within a short range of the suction head and then you go to the larger floats when you get closer to the dredge. It's a matter of personal preference and it also depends upon your dredging application as to where you place these floats. So you, you simply need to experiment a little bit and strategically locate these floats um, where, they, uh, th where they work for you the best. In this case, uh, I'm going to have a float very close to this head um, because I want this float to take most of the weight of this head and uh, I'm going to have another float about three feet down uh, to take the weight of this hose out. So for this particular dredging application, I have these floats laid out to where I feel that they're in the right st strategic location. On the discharge, we have 75 feet of non-collapsible hose in this particular situation. You notice that I have quite a few floats on the discharge. Uh, to um, make it float in the water. Once we start pumping through it, that hose is going to get heavy and it's going to want to go straight to the bottom and be kind of an anchor down there. So I have enough floats attached here. Normally about three floats in a 25 foot section of hose is plenty of flotation uh, to float your hose. So we have three 25 foot sections of non-collapsible hose hooked up here. And then we transition into lay flat hose. All of our hoses are connected with Camlock quick disconnect couplings, a male and a female. These are sealed with a gasket. And sometimes if, if you're taking these hoses apart and putting them back together, you're going to lose a gasket inadvertently once in a while. On the discharge side, it doesn't really matter much if you lose a gasket. The, joint, the, the hose joint will simply leak some there. If you lose a gasket on the intake side of the hoses, you're going to have an air leak and your pump will not prime and you won't pump anything and you'll think there's something wrong with your pump. In addition to the 75 feet of non-collapsible hose, we have three 50-foot rolls of lay-flat hose uh, going up to our spoils area here. So we have a total of 225 feet of discharge on the unit right now.
we've dug a small spoils area here. It actually holds about 10,000 gallons. And the idea here is that we're going to um, discharge the, uh, the material into here. There'll be quite a bit of water along with it. Um, and the sediment is going to settle out and the water will carry out um, the end of our little dam there and, and gradually feed back into the pond. So we're recovering all of our pond water, yet we're getting all of our sediment to drop out right here.